You're listening to an Airwave Media Podcast. When you need mealtime inspiration, it's worth Shopping Kroger, where you'll find over 30,000 mouth-watering choices that excite your inner foodie. And no matter what tasty choice you make, you'll enjoy our everyday low prices, plus extra ways to save, like digital coupons worth over $600 each week. You can also save up to $1 off per gallon at the pump with fuel points. More savings and more inspiring flavors make Shopping Kroger worth it every time. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Fuel restrictions apply. Welcome to From Beneath the Hollywood Sign. If you love old movies, Hollywood history, or the golden age of filmmaking, you've come to the right place. This is the podcast that talks about amazing stories of Tinseltown from another era and fascinating conversations with writer-producer Steve Kubine and actress-writer Nan McNamara. So, Steve, did Ava Gardner and Howard Hughes have a good relationship? Well, they did until he dislocated her jaw. What? Well, don't worry. She hit him back with an ashtray. From Beneath the Hollywood Sign is the gin joint for you. in Chicago, Illinois, with your hosts, Ken, Matt, Neil, and Jeff. This is Triviality. Hello and welcome to Triviality, the game where lack of seriousness meets a little bit of knowledge. My name is Neil. I'm here in an empty studio today, but we have so many wonderful guests we are going to get to in just a minute. This is part two of an always sunny in Philadelphia trivia bonus episode. If you heard the last episode written and hosted by our friend Paul Paquette, uh, you would have known that uh, Bailey uh, Hildebrand was the winner and the champion. And uh, Bailey reached out and said, you know what? I can't let Paul have all the fun. I want to turn the tables and write my own game. So we are here for uh, part two, which is going to be another full game of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia trivia questions. And we have some extra competitors with us today that we're excited to introduce. But first, let's introduce our guest host who wrote all of today's questions, Oakland Five supporter on Patreon from Atlanta, Bailey Hildebrand. How are you, Bailey? Hi, good. How are you? Doing well. So I was so excited to get your email that uh, after you won, you wanted to turn the tables on Paul. Uh, so just to remind people a little bit about yourself and then tell us uh, as far as the characters on It's Always Sunny, which one you'd like to spend the day with and why? Yeah, I'm a stormwater engineer in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, yeah, like aerial silks and sitcoms. And uh, I think that if I had to spend the day with a member of the gang, it would come down to safety <laughs> and I think I would probably be in the least physical and emotional danger with Mac. <laughs> <laughs> Very good answer. Uh, well, yeah, thank you so much for writing today's game. Uh, and we'll get back to uh, sort of the rules and how it's set up in just a moment. Um, our next uh, competitor is going to be Paul Paquette, who uh, hosted last game and wrote the questions for that. But he's here today going to be taking uh, the brunt uh, of all the questions. And he's an Oakland 5 supporter on Patreon from Ottawa. How are you, Paul? Good to see you. I'm terrific. Very, 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 very good. Well, good. I, I know uh, you host a ton of trivia and you've written trivia books, uh, but today you get to play, which is, is always fun. Uh, but yeah, tell us a little bit about you and where people can find all of your work and then what character you'd like to spend a day with and why. So I uh, run the Ottawa Trivia League up here and I have a uh, site called uh, Trivia Hall of Fame. We're actually going to be doing the election for this year's Trivia Hall of Fame uh, shortly. So that, that's something. Um and uh, in terms of, uh, I agree, safety would actually have to be number one. Uh, I might lean toward, more toward Charlie, though, rather than Mac. I like that. Uh, and, and definitely it would be some some good one-liners, I think, coming from Charlie. So at least it would be entertaining all day. Um, well, thank you very much for, for joining us. And our two new competitors today, uh, the first one has been on the show before. It's great to see him again uh, coming to us from Somerset in England. And that is David Rowe. How are you, David? Hi, I'm not too bad. How are you keeping? I'm doing well. Uh, it's great to see you. And uh, I think you might be the first uh, competitor we've had from the UK in, in quite a bit of time, which is always great uh, to have someone uh, from across the pond because we had a lot of Australians on, but now we get to have someone from England. But uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, what you're up to, and same question, which character you'd like to hang out with? Uh, yes, so I currently work in tech support for a software company because I'm the most exciting man on the planet. Um in terms of the member of the gang, it would probably be Mac just so we could film some Project Badass videos and I could steal the duster. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Great answer. Well, uh, thank you for being uh, with us today. And our final competitor, uh, always fun to uh, see him on the Discord. Uh, so if you if you haven't been on the, the Triviality Discord, we'd love to have you over there and 
a lot of fun things going on over there. But uh, coming to us from Decatur, Georgia, Oaken 5 supporter on Patreon, Nick Bourne. How are you, Nick? We're doing great. How are you? Doing great. Uh, so happy that uh, you signed up for this uh, in, in order to, uh, to play another round of It's Always Sunny trivia. But uh, tell folks a little bit about yourself and what character you'd like to hang out with. Yeah, um, I'm a computer science major at Georgia State. I uh, just graduated, actually, like a week ago. So, oh, congrats. Um, currently, yeah, thank you. Currently trying to get into a what is apparently a very saturated job market for computer science, but I'm trying my best shot. And um, if I had to spend a day with a It's Always Sunny character, I'd probably go with Charlie. I think it would just be the most fun. I think he would know, you know, places under bridges, that sort of thing to, <laughs> you know, go hang out. Well, good answer. So I guess we had no uh, no Frank, no D, and uh, no Dennis. So um, I don't know if any of those people. <laughs> I don't Definitely know if any of those people it, are out no. there. So maybe write in and say, yeah, I would hang out with Dennis, no problem. But um, I guess d- don't drive in front of Dennis poorly. That's that's one thing I guess to, to know. But uh, thank you all for joining us today. Um, for everyone listening at home, it's just going to be like last game, uh, sort of like our, our most recent uh, bonus formats that we've been doing. It's going to be thirty questions. We're having a little special swing round today of two questions per competitor but it's going to be highest score wins and uh bailey anything else we should know about your game uh, that you wrote before we start well uh i did try to uh, like give everyone the same amount of difficult questions to easy questions so hopefully i gauge those right wonderful uh and i did a little name randomizer so the order today is going to be nick then paul then david so that's going to be our, our order for the game so bailey feel free to take it away awesome Well, our first category of question, each of you are going to get a question from the world of food. Uh, So number one, Nick, when Frank and Mac get stranded out in the middle of the ocean, Frank is devastated that he lost what food item? That would be rum ham. Rum ham. I'm sorry, (laughs) rum rum ham. ham. (laughs) Awesome. All right, Paul. What is Charlie's favorite food? Uh, milk steak. Milk steak is correct. With uh, raw jelly beans, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jelly beans, raw. <laughs> oh, sounds gross. <laughs> All right. And David, what food does Charlie sneak into the movie theater and spa? <laughs> I don't actually know, but I'll say cheese because he loves cheese. Oh, does anyone else know? What's your spaghetti policy, Bailey? Spaghetti. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, yeah, spaghetti. Yeah, spaghetti. Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking of the, the spa. Are you saying spaghetti? <laughs> <laughs> and in our next round, it's going to be food again because there are so many wonderful foods and it's always sunny. What food, this is for Nick, what food does Matt carry around in a trash bag when he is cultivating mass? Oh, um, wasn't it like a bag of hoagies? Or no, burritos. It was burritos, right? It was chimichangas. Oh. Hmm. And Dennis says, you're becoming a chimichanga. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All All right, Paul, what treat is strictly forbidden in Ass Kickers United? Oh, it's the reason Dennis set it up. <laughs> oh, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Um, oh, I'm going to say milk does, but that's not right. Oh, David, do you know it looked like you had a flash of recognition? It's, uh, I think it's, is it Thin, thin Mints? Yes, Thin Mints, the Girl what? Scout cookie. Have you ever <laughs> had one, David, being, being over they in the UK? Never, ever made their way over here. Oh, boy, if you get a chance... They're Maybe great, we can ship them some or something. <laughs> I, I don't know if customs would, would block it. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> especially if you pop it in the freezer, that's the best kind of Thin Mint. Mm-hmm. I would okay. also start my own cult to protect Thin Mints. <laughs> a Thin Mint cult? That, that, yeah. that sounds like an It's Always Sunny uh, episode for sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And David, this is for you. Okay, David, aside from bread, what is one of the ingredients in a grilled Charlie? I'm going to do my favorite podcast thing of just keep saying the same answer. And I'm going to say cheese. Cheese is correct. <laughs> hey. And the trick. Brilliant. 
<laughs> the trick is to finish it on the radiator so that the cheese melts but doesn't burn. Yeah. <laughs> all right. In our next round, you can't have food without Frank's fluids. So this is all about drinks. Uh, so Nick, Mac and Charlie develop Fight Milk, the first alcoholic dairy-based protein drink for bodyguards by bodyguards. Fight Milk combines milk, vodka, and the eggs of what bird? I think it's whale eggs. Oh, man. Does anyone else know? It's pigeons? It's a crow. It's crows. Crows, crows yes. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> All right, and Paul, what did Charlie drink that caused him to set off the metal detector when he went to meet Aaron Paul and Brian Cranston? Nickels. You've got yeah. a drink full of nickels. <laughs> he drank nickel schlager, <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> which was their their uh, new brand of golden schlager. And he keeps calling Brian Cranston Mr. Metal. <laughs> yeah. Well- all right and david what is the official drink of the terrorist organization boko haram (laughs) uh that is wolf cola and we're not sorry about it (laughs) (laughs) yes wolf cola all right and in our next round we're gonna go back to school uh science is a liar sometimes (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so one of my favorite things about the show is uh, how they so confidently know wrong science and things that they've just made up along the way. Um, so for Nick, Charlie thinks that when he burns garbage, the smoke goes up in the sky and creates what? Is it like rain cloud? Oh, it's Stars. stars. And Max says, I don't know enough uh, yeah. about stars to dispute it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Paul, aside from vomiting, what does Mac advise Dennis to do after accidentally eating apple seeds? Oh, shoot. I saw this episode last night. Well, that's so weird. I just, I, li- I literally just saw this episode last night. Um, oh, smoke, smoke. Yes, smoke some cigarettes because the smoke smothers the bacteria in your stomach. (laughs) (laughs) This is uh, when they're throwing water at each other. Yeah. Yes. Um, That's like when they break up. Yep. And next up, what safety measure do Mac and Frank think will protect them against electrocution when they work on the circuit breaker? I do not recall that at all. Um, I'm sure someone's going to say it and it's going to be obvious. Uh, I'm holding hands. <laughs> do y'all know? They have to be like midair or something, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. They need to be hanging from the ceiling or jumping in the air uh, because you only get electrocuted if your feet are on the ground. <laughs> 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 oh, okay. So... The last round before the swing round is about the gang. Um, This question is for Nick. What was the new title of Lethal Weapon 7 after the gang gave Don Cheadle complete creative control? And do do you know who I mean by Don Cheadle? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I don't remember this episode. I I really don't know. I'm going to have to pass. Do y'all know this was Nick's, uh, what I designated, hard question? Was this White Saviors? Mm. Yes, White Saviors. Uh. (laughs) All right, Paul. What did Dee, Dennis, and Mac have to do for a year because they lost a bet against Frank about living out in the suburbs? Sleep with an old man. Yes, an old (laughs) man had to sleep in their bed for a year. Yeah. All right, David. In order to tug at heartstrings, D suggest the gang pretend to be religious stuttering army carnies when they audition to open for what musical group? Is it Boys to Men? Yes. Nice. Boys to Men. Great. Great job. So after five questions, uh, it looks like Nick's got one on the board. Paul uh, has four. David has three. 
Uh, and before we go to uh, Bailey's swing round, I was just curious, uh, maybe starting with Bailey, is there a line from the show that you like say every day, like either in your head or out loud that you found yourself repeating quite often for different circumstances? Oh boy, there are so many. And some of them are just regular things that someone would say, like, I regret it already. That's <laughs> the waitress says that <laughs> when she agrees to go to the Nightman cometh. That's a good one, though. Uh, Bailey, uh, what do you have for the swing round? What is it today? Well, they're actually going to be quotes. So um, actually, these first three I do say all the time. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm I'm going to read the quote and you tell me what character said it. Um, there's at least one in which another character wrote the words, but I want the character who said the words. Okay. So first up, Nick. Money me, money now. Me a money needing a lot now. Is that Charlie? Charlie wrote it, yeah. but do y'all remember this? This is the election speech, right? Is it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's when um, Bonnie Kelly was pretending to have cancer. Oh, okay. Oh, oh right. yeah. but Charlie did write yeah. it and he's standing side stage, yeah. like mouthing the words. <laughs> <laughs> um. All right, number two, this is what I often said during the pandemic. I just want to be pure. That's uh, Frank. <laughs> yes, as he's writhing on the ground, <laughs> sh completely shaved and covered in <laughs> hand sanitizer. <laughs> hand sanitizer, yeah. <laughs> All right, and David, I've been poisoned by my constituents. I don't actually recall. I will guess Charlie. Yes, Charlie's right. It's when he takes all those blood capsules. Is it where he's got the, the blood capsules? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And, and these are, are harder. Um, and I will take a description of it, but if someone rings in and knows that character's name, then can they steal it, Neil? It's up to you. Yeah, host's, host discretion. So you let me know and I'll score it that way. Well, I am the golden god, and I decide, yes, <laughs> okay. steals are on the board. <laughs> okay. Okay. So this is for Nick. My grandmother had an affair with Susan B. Anthony. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> oh, what's her name? Um, it's like an old-fashioned name. Uh, like, yeah, I'll just say Gertrude. Steal. Steal. Okay, Gladys. Paul. Gladys. Gladys. That's it, yeah. <laughs> so... This is my favorite minor character of the whole show. Yeah. 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 And I went and I am slightly obsessed with her. So I, I Googled and her name is May Laborde and she started acting at the age of 93. Yep. That's amazing. And she acted all the way through her until her death at 102. Yep. Um, yeah. And her bloopers with the gang are absolutely hilarious. Like they, if you watch scenes with them, they have to turn their backs because they're laughing so hard. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. So number two, when can I talk to Frank about his salvation? Oh, it is um, from the Christmas episode. It is Frank's former partner, uh, but I don't have his name. Does anyone know his name? don't think I do, no. Okay, I get, uh, Paul gets the points. It's Eugene Hamilton. That's right. The Big Lebowski. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and I censored this one down a little bit. I took one word out. But David, <laughs> <laughs> that was some nice denim too. I miss them shorts. But you, you got to take them off every now and then. You got to take them off, son. I am not sure. I am going to guess a relatively minor character of Carmen. Paul? In Canada, we call him Zed. <laughs> yes, that's Z. Uh, and I forget the actor's name, but he's also on like The Wire yeah. and uh, like The Expanse. Yeah. He is so funny. And my favorite scene with him is um, when they take Poppins to get medical care under the bridge and he <laughs> can't understand that they... <laughs> They don't want him to put the dog down. 
<laughs> I think I heard in the podcast yeah. the scene where he's talking to uh, Ben the soldier about the the the, the, jo- the shorts is he didn't know that he had those lines and they gave him a page of script that he memorized instantly. So what? Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, I think it's Chad L. Coleman. I think is the actor. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Nice. So uh, after the swing round, it looks like uh, David's going to pick up a point, bringing his total of four. Uh, Nick, unfortunately, didn't didn't get an extra point, but you still got uh, five questions here in the second half. And then Paul picked up four points with two points coming from Steele. So the scores are Nick with one, Paul with uh, eight, David with four. So uh, let's keep going. It's a gr- great game here. Awesome. So the next rounds are all going to be members of the gang. And we're going to start off with... The gold-hearted Charlie. So, Nick. Charlie thought he was writing in a gibberish language with his childhood pen pal, but he was actually reading and writing in what language? Oh, man. I remember this episode. Um, I was going to say Mandarin. Do you remember where... Do you remember who his childhood pen pal was? No. It was a whole season set here. Anyone else know? Oh, yeah, it's uh, it's Gaelic. Yes. (laughs) And he has the whole conversation with his dad, doesn't he, about how he can't speak Gaelic, which he tells him fluently in Gaelic. (laughs) (laughs) All right, Paul. Due to his fondness of Peter Nincompoop, what kind of mythical creature does Charlie think he was in a previous life? Hmm. I don't remember this at all. Um, just because it tracks, I'm going to say ghoul. Well, Peter Nincompoop was the horse, the racing horse that... Oh, that's right! Yeah, that he that's got attached right. to. And so yeah. he thinks that he was a centaur. That's right. <laughs> all right, and David? Oh. <laughs> what two characters have shot like Charlie? One did so in season one and the other in season 16. So the first one's definitely Dennis, because that's when um, Michael Rosenbaum's in it from Smallville. Uh, I assume it's Frank as the last one, because Frank shoots yep. everyone in an episode. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Dennis shoots him, I think, in the head. Yep. Yeah, and... I think he, gra- he grazes his head. Yes. Because he said, oh, if I shot him in the head, he'd be dead. <laughs> And Frank shot him and it bounced around the bar and it like grazed his ear. <laughs> yep. Yep. All right. And our next round is going to be on Mac. So Nick, what does Mac insist on buying at the pawn shop when he and Charlie try to stage their own deaths? Uh, yeah. It's a wedding dress. Yes. He wears a wedding dress <laughs> after getting concussed. <laughs> Is that the one, um, I remember seeing that episode, is that the one where they're watching from like the ceiling of the yeah. wake? Okay, yeah, that one was great, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he Huckleberry fins his own funeral. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Paul, who does Mac think should be cast to play him? Oh, this is the uh, episode where they're thinking about euthanizing Pop Pop. Um <laughs> Who's a Nazi bitch, by the way, and definitely deserves to be used tonight. <laughs> um, oh, oh, and it's the whole bit about he has my intense energy. Oh, who is this? It's not Brad Pitt, but I'm going to guess Brad Pitt. Does anyone else know? It's not Dolph Lundgren, is it? No, but that is the most underestimated actor of all time. <laughs> yeah, I know they have a lot. Yeah, I know they do love him. So at first, Max says uh, Mark Wahlberg, but he can't match Max's intensity. So then he said Ryan Gosling locked in. Oh wow! Okay. And uh, then when Charlie gets that mouthful of braces and he's like huffing on the nitro, he says Ryan Gosling play you ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been funny right. if it had been the other Canadian Ryan that they talked about in the episode. That would have been uh, <laughs> that would have been something. 
All right, and David. Mac blames his allergic reaction on blowing up inflatable furniture, but what is he really allergic to? Uh, nuts. Uh, the fancy nuts. ones yeah. that aren't fancy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's right. Awesome. So our next round is going to be on Frank. Nick. Frank attempts to meet what musician under the guise of buying his arena football team? And so for some more context, um, he wants to meet with him to add legitimacy to Dennis's erotic tales. <laughs> oh, that's um, is it Rob Thomas. No, but Rob Thomas is in that episode. It's uh, Bon Jovi. Yes, or right. otherwise known as Bovine Joni. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like Frank can't say his name right. And that's one of the iterations. All right, Paul. Uh, who saves Frank from choking in Gaginos? That's the uh, the waiter. The waiter, yes. Who they never remember. <laughs> and they've I met remember probably a man 10 who times. fell into a space of spaghetti. <laughs> all right david charlie becomes increasingly jealous of all the attention frank is giving jerry what is jerry (laughs) jerry is uh his tapeworm his tapeworm (laughs) i'm craving salty but jerry likes sweet (laughs) awesome all right, and next up is a whole round on D. Nick, why was D institutionalized? Uh, I'm going to have to pass again. So it's mentioned when they try to buy a gun. Yeah. And it's mentioned, I think, in therapy. But Paul? Uh, she burned her college roommate. Yes. Down uh... to the box springs. <laughs> I love if someone's listening to this episode out of context with all the little quotes and like stories. Like, what is this show? <laughs> That's <Yeah>. great. <laughs> yeah, she burned her college roommate. And I love that when they were trying to get a gun, she said, uh, that shouldn't even count. It wasn't voluntary institutionalization. And Dennis says, That's the only time it counts. <laughs> Paul, what was Dee's nickname in high school? Uh, the aluminum monster. Yes. Because she had a, a back phrase. Yeah. Um, David. was Fatty Magoo. Yes. <laughs> David, according to D, what singer likes his ladies to pop? Oh, um, this is one that she's really into. Is it Josh, Josh Groban? Yes. Josh Groban loves his ladies to pop. Yeah. <laughs> because <laughs> she wanted to have a nice tan and then have white shorts on so that the white would pop. <laughs> it was really funny in the um, in the the robbery episode where they all have fantasies about how they're going to deal with the robbery. Mm. Deke becomes yeah. famous and Josh Robin appears and he's really funny in it. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think we're going to be together <laughs> for a very long time. And it's like they break out like a day later. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Okay, so the last round is about Dennis. All right, Nick. What personality disorder does Dennis get diagnosed with? What is it? I remember this. Um, I just can't quite pull it. I'll just say like um, borderline personality disorder. I'm not sure. Yes, that's right. It was borderline personality disorder. (laughs) They're trying to get medicine for Psycho Pete. That's right. And, <laughs> and he, he was like, I just had a reasonable conversation with a reasonable man, and I walked out of there with these pills. <laughs> so he threatens to turn D into luggage just in front of the therapist. <laughs> Glenn Harrison does that so well. <laughs> He does play him so well. I, I guess what's I love about it too, just from a filmmaking standpoint, um, since that's what I do, is that you know if you have a, a troop of people that you're friends with or you've acted with before, or 
you have great chemistry with. I think anytime those shows uh, come up like this one where, um, you know, they've been together a long time, they've kind of created the character off of themselves a little bit. Uh, it just, the chemistry is so good. And then it just seems like it, the, the line is so blurred between who they are in real life <laughs> and who they are as a character. And you can kind of play with that too. Cause I feel like um, Glenn Howerton could probably mess with people into thinking he's really Dennis, even though I'm sure he's not, but it's just, oh, no. yeah. yeah, it's just fun. <laughs> he has some Dennis traits, but I don't think he's, he's full Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we can handle full Hopefully Dennis. Hopefully nobody is. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Paul, why was the interior of Dennis's Range Rover ruined when Frank rear-ended him? Because he was eating cereal. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Which actually happened to Glenn Howerton, and that's why they wrote the episode Ooh. about it. <laughs> that, that would be a nightmare. I'm just thinking of the milk and everything all over the place. Uh, my uh, exactly. my friend, um, uh, or not my friend, me actually, in high school, for some reason, I don't know why, but it was a hundred degree day and, and someone, uh, in early in the, the wee hours of the morning, uh, poured a, uh, carton or can of ragu, uh, pasta sauce all over the car. So for like a month, it smelled like cooked pasta in my car. It was terrible. <laughs> uh, the worst prank ever, like just toilet paper in my house or something. Just pour pasta sauce in my car. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, is that a prank or is that like vandalism? <laughs> it should be vandalism, especially because it was, it was, it wasn't a good pasta sauce either. So it smelled terrible. <laughs> well for our last question david what are the names of mac and dennis's good realtor bad realtor person personas i remember the episode i just don't remember the names at all i'm afraid i'll have to pass on that oh I saw nick this one last night there's yeah, another one last night and vic vinegar yeah yes hugh honey and vic vinegar <laughs> I love the concept of like a mean realtor. <laughs> <laughs> this house too big for you. Just like, yeah. He just like screams at her until she buys it. Yeah. <laughs> but hey, we agreed a sale. That went really well. <laughs> <laughs> well, great job to everyone here. Uh, Nick, you ended the game with three points. Uh, David, very strong showing. You ended with eight points. And then Paul, with a little bit of help from those two steals, too. Um, you ended with 11 points in our today's winner. So Bailey, uh, you, you turned the tables on Paul, but Paul, you stepped up to the plate and, and hit a home run as well. So great job to everyone on that. Um, Nick, uh, let's start with you uh, before we let you go. Is there an episode you love that everyone should check out if they haven't seen the show or maybe they haven't seen it in a while, one that you love watching on repeat? Hmm, I think my favorite is uh, Mac and Dennis move to the suburbs. I think just um, Glenn Howerton's performance in that episode is just, fantastic some of the like facial expressions he makes when he's like um <laughs> news flag asshole i've been hearing it the entire time <laughs> it's just like he's so he's just so good in that episode uh any other shout outs to uh you like to say before we let you go today um yeah let me shout out um my family my mom and dad and sister um for somehow watching the show with me i was very surprised to find out that my parents who are like, you know, 60s, 70s, just love this show as much as I do. And yeah. I love that. Well, uh, yeah. Hello to them. And, and uh, thank you again for, for being here today. Uh, let's go to David. Uh, any words you'd like to say before we let you go today? And what episode would you recommend people check out? Uh, so the episode I would recommend, I think it's called Charlie Work, where they have the, the health inspection at the bar. And he's just like doing all this thing, all this stuff to pass the inspection. And everyone just completely ignores him. <laughs> I just think, yeah, it's such a really well done episode. I think it's one of my favorites. Love that. And any uh, any final words before we let you go today? Uh, I don't believe so. No. Um, stay safe. Don't drink paint. Be good. <laughs> <laughs> Money me. Uh, and <laughs> uh, and Paul, uh, great showing today. You uh, you you know gave great questions to Bailey. She uh, succeeded, and so did you. So any anyone you'd like to give a shout out to, or anything else you'd like to talk about, and, and an episode that people should check out. Uh, a shout out to Bailey. This, this was a terrific game. Thank you very much. Those were great questions. Oh, thank um, you. In terms of episodes, uh, last month I mentioned the three that I think are the funniest, but I think the best episode uh, again is Charlie Work because you've got several long takes and it's just 
intricate and really well done. Uh, so that's awesome. Yeah, I think one of the things people forget about the show because it is so you know zany and kooky is uh, the filmmaking is very very good and um, all their sensibilities coming from you know being a low budget show on YouTube uh, to just getting a little bit more money, uh, a little bit more resources. But you can tell that they actually know film and especially. Uh, I always kind of think of the episode where they they basically you know line for line recreate uh, Seinfeld, but none of them, all of them want to be Jerry. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I just stuff like that. Like their their film knowledge and their TV knowledge is so good, and I think it's kind of an underrated aspect of the show. Um, yeah, that's a that's a great point. It, it's got some really moving things as well. Like for such a ridiculously zany, funny show, like, um, where Mac does his dance performance. Yeah. Yes, it's exactly. Genuinely, and one it, of the yeah, most moving really well. things I've ever seen. Yes, it is. Because if you, yeah, like we, we were talking about, you know, things out of context. If you took that out of context, it's a yeah. great uh, dance piece, choreographed piece, and really emotional. Mm -hmm. um, really cool. Uh, and then Bailey, if you took that and put that to like the first episode, you'd be like, that's not the same <laughs> thing. <laughs> Maybe that's what the, the listeners at home should do is watch the, you know, one of the first episodes and then that back to back <laughs> just to see how they feel. Uh, Bailey, thank you so much for putting this game together. The questions were awesome. The categories were great. Uh, and it was just a wonderful game. Uh, what uh, would you like to tell people to watch as far as an episode and any uh, last words before we let you go? Yeah, I think uh, The Gang Gets Quarantined is one of my favorites. Uh, I think it came out like seven years before COVID and it was a, a perfect encapsulation of COVID. Um, and I would like to shout out my friends at Super Geek Trivia Fights. It's a Atlanta trivia company run by my friend Abe. Um, and he has a very uniquely formatted game. You get to spin a wheel and it's almost all fandom based questions like uh, today's game. So our, if you're not in the Atlanta area, uh, follow them on social media, Super Geek Trivia Fights. Awesome. Well, be sure to check them out. Uh, and if you're going to check out Super Geek Trivia Fights, uh, we also want to say check out our network Air, Airwave. You can go to airwavemedia.com to check out a bunch of their shows. Some of the new ones that are fun to check out are History That Doesn't Suck, uh, Emotional Badass, and The World in Brief. So make sure to check that out. And of course, uh, these uh, episodes, the bonus episodes, wouldn't be possible without our patrons. So if you'd like to join all of our wonderful patrons helping us uh, do many different things like this and Bloodsport and all of our weekly bonuses uh, over on Patreon, you can go to patreon.com slash trivialitypodcast. But for my co-hosts, Matt, Jeff, and Ken, who aren't here today, and our wonderful competitors and hosts today, Paul, David, Nick, and Bailey, my name is Neil, and that was Triviality. Calling all trivia nerds, Brittany here, and I host the Family Road Trip Trivia Podcast with my best friend, Meredith. Is your next car ride looking like a snooze fest? <laughs> We've got The Cure, three rounds of awesome trivia every week. Harry Potter, Disney, science, sports, you name it. No more silent car troubles. The Family Road Trip Trivia Podcast. Connect, laugh, and learn with your kids, big and small. <laughs> New episodes every week, wherever you get your podcasts. Search for the Family Road Trip Trivia Podcast.